Hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room and welcome back to another video in this Patreon series, building the, the 400 Stuart. We've got a bit done. We've drilled these two holes here. Uh, oh, this is heavy. Two oil holes, one for the main and one for the gears. And last episode, we got these two holes in here. And it's looking pretty good. Today I'm starting the crankshaft, which is a one of those crazy jobs. I've got a piece of pre-hard 4140, which is, I think, 38 RC, something like that. It's probably just the thing to run in a cast iron bearing. I've cut it off the length and I've put a, a centre drill in each end. So we can set this between centres repeatedly, time and time again, hopefully. And because it's going to need a few operations, it's got to be machined both ends. It's got to be a press fit on the crank on one end, or a good fit. It's got to fit through this bore here and be a nice running fit. And it's got to be a good, reasonable fit on the end on the on the flywheel, which is here. In the middle, in between it's got to have 18 teeth cut in it at a 0.8 module so it's kind of all over the place the gears are the the drawings are imperial and my met, latest metric and my metal machine's imperial and the gears i'm using are, are metric so we've got a bit of a mix up of, of sizes here the reason i've gone with metric gears rather than keep everything to uniform imperial sizes is that metric cutters are only about half the price here so less than that probably quarter of the price so I've got some I've got some cutters first job really though is to clean this up to diameter of the gear or, or getting close and clean the end up to somewhere near the diameter of that and then do that in the, in the three jaw chuck turn it around and put a center in it machine the, the body of it down so that it's a fraction oversize here just rough it out basically so i'm going to do that and um we'll come back and have a look so here we go i've got this rough down um this 12 mil and 17 and 12 and a bit short here and probably a bit under here this gear is not going to be quite this long uh need to think a bit about the procedure to get this right right we've set this up with a dog on this end which is going to leave a mark and i don't really want to do that again at any point so the best thing we can do and the best way to do it i think is to machine this to the right size this wants to says a drive fit for this crank goes on there so we want to measure this properly and run a run that down to the right diameter uh, we're going to pin that over and put a scotch pin in it and that's going to be plenty good enough then we need to machine this to 16.4 millimeters which is the the right diameter for the gear and then we need to cut the gear on here then when this is on then we can put this on and we can turn this around and use this to drive it and we can machine the other side to go in the bearing so that's the the plan of attack. <clears throat> that way we're machining this fresh on this end and we're not having to put a dog on this side piece here and damage it and mark it up so that it jams when we fit it. This goes up against that gear. Then in the end too we can adjust the length here and get it sitting in and out the right distance so that this crank bin is on centre for the piston. So, so that's that's the thoughts about that. First job is to machine this. We're going to we're going to sit down with a micrometer and a ball gauge and just to work out exactly what that is. And then we're going to machine that the right length so that it just sticks out a fraction and it's a good tight fit. Probably put a chamfer on the end of it so that it fits jams on nice and call this one done 
then we can machine this down to 16.4 which is OD for the gear or it's the major diameter for, for an 18 2.8 module gear then hopefully we can set it up between centers on the dividing head and cut this gear that's the theory that's where we're at with it so let's go so we're aiming for 10.82 here that's, that's where we need to be I think this is about 12 millimeters now so I'm going to clean it up So there we are, we should be right on the money there at 10.82, that's what we're aiming for. So just before we go any further, let's push on fit, we've kind of gone too far. However, it looks like it's going to be about two taps, three taps. Fraction loose, but a bit of lock tight will fix that. And that looks like it's going to work. So, we're going to call that one done. There we've got 16.4 exactly, so I'm pretty happy with that. Next job really is to set it up and to cut these teeth on the gear. So I've got this down to pretty much exactly what it needs to be to be a press fit. It's going to be a good tight tap fit I hope. And this one is 16.4 millimeters, which is exactly what it needs to be to, to cut the gear. This we haven't touched yet. We're gonna get this back on, cut the gear and fit this to the crank while we can still hold on to this. And then we're gonna set it up between centers and the other way around and machine this to fit the bearing. So. That's where we're at now. Time to take this off and we'll go over the mill and we'll set it up and see if we can get it in the dividing head and make it work. So here we go, I think, unless I lose nerve completely. I've set this up and I've used the four jaw just to give me another inch of length, which I really probably need because we're running out. We've probably got an inch here. But just to be sure, and so that we're working over the table a bit, I've used the forger and I've set this up nice and concentric here. Um, if you can see that there. Now, I've also gone to the trouble of indicating this in this way because it's the first time this has been used and haven't really set it yet. So, and also this way. So this should all be in line nicely. The tail stock's in place properly where it should be. There's no movement in that. And I've gone to the trouble of finding the, the, the 27 hole plate and I've put that on the dividing head and I've messed around with the camera a bit and try and get some sort of an angle that works. Found an arbor, which is in my 
ER32 collet chuck. There's not much run out here. It's about one thou, one half thou here. And there's a bit more here. I did order one, but it seems to have gone missing in the post. And it's Chinese. So I'm not sure the Morse Taper 2 stub arbor is going to be much better than what I've got here. But it's the slitting saw arbor. And I've got it running reasonably true. And it's done up nice and tight. The only real thing to do is to make sure this is on centre this way and then touch off. I've got a one, two, three block with a icy pole stick or ice cream stick stuck on it with a clamp. And I'm just going to sit that on there nicely up against it. Nice and square. Up against the tailstock and up against the work and wind that in until I can feel it. I can just feel that there and then I've set it to zero. What we've actually discovered is we've run out of room this way. So first time I've used this dividing head on this mill, first time I've used this cutter, the first favorite job's a little bit different, I guess, but we've run out of room this way, so we're not going to give clearance to, to cut this way. We're going to have to cut it that way, but it's not a very deep cut, so we're going to take our chances with that, which means reversing the cutter. So I'm going to do that and um, come back. Let's fix that. Next job, I've set this up on here. We need to know that this, we know that this is 14 point, point, or 16.4 millimetres, that's what it is. So we need to wind this through this way. 16.4, less half the thickness of the cutter. So let's measure the cutter. And the cutter seems to be 3.3 millimetres. Just going to triple check that I've actually got this right. So here we go. I've got this on sender, I think. Gosh, I think, I hope. I've given this, I've touched off it. I've given it 0.1 of a millimetre cut, something like that. So hopefully if everything's right, this should clean up each end of the cut the same distance all the way around, line up at the end and be... 18 divisions. That's that's what we're aiming for. If we look at the black book, and this is the easiest way, um, check this out. You need one that's signed by Mr. Pete. But apart from that, it should work in most black books. Uh, 18 TPI. You need the 27 tooth or the 27 hole wheel. And you need two complete turns and six holes, so six twenty-sevenths. That should work. It should also work on the eighteen hole. If you've got an eighteen hole disc, then it should work at four eighteenths. But hopefully that's right. I've set this at seven gaps here. Um, so if we're back on zero there. We should go two complete turns and then to this next one here. And then we can slop this from one side to the other. And that should give us a measurement for the next six. So hopefully this works. Let's try. And take the indicator off out of the way so it doesn't fill up with dirt and swarf. We're going to start this. Put a tiny bit of cutting oil on there. And I guess we'll find out where all the setting, where everything's loose. And we've got one cut. Let's try again. So we're going to go here. One hole, one circle, two circles. And 
and six holes. That should be the second one. If we flip this to there, and then go one, turn two turns, and back in here, like so. That should be number three. this round here again and do it again one two and six holes we can try again And so on. And that should be number four. I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to go right round without losing too much concentration and we'll see how we go. Let's have a look when we've done that. So, this is the last cut. We need 1.73 depth of cut, which is two times the module, which is 0.8, so 1.6, and then 1.3, which is clearance, basically. Uh, according to calculations and we've gone down to 1.5 this last cuts 0 0.27 uh, 2 point, 0 0.23 of a millimeter we should clean it up with any luck So I'm going to go around and see what we end up with. It's starting to look like a gear on the end there, so pretty happy about that. I'm going to run around it and see what I think, and then we might take it out and have a look at it over on the bench and fit the crank. So another 10 cuts or so, and we're done. So there we go, that should be the full depth. Well, it's taken me probably two hours, something like that, from sort of start cutting the finish. There's a fair bit of work in a little bit like that. And it needs a good deburr. First job though is to take it out and take it across the bench and see what it looks like. So there we go. We've got 18 tooth gear. Probably should count them just to make sure. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen teeth. So that's a good thing. Straight off the cutter, it might just be a fraction sharp. I'm going to give that a bit of a stone up. But that looks pretty good. Next job is to press this in here. Uh, hopefully. That should press in there with a bit of 680. Um, that's sort of the plan. I'm going to stone the corners of this nicely first and then we're going to set it up between senders and we're going to machine this 
to fit here and then it's going to need a keyway. So once this is in here and tight, I'm probably going to put a scotch key in here I think as per instructions and peen the end over so that it fits. So that should be nice secure sort of a hold I think. But it's starting to look like a crankshaft. I'm going to sit down at the bench and give this a stone up. And I might press this in here. Um, generally, it's one of those operations that work better when it's not on camera. We'll be able to report back and see whether it was a two tap fit or whether it was actually like 500 ton press fit. So hopefully it's not that tight. But it won't hurt anything if it is, I guess. So let's do that. So it's on. I'm probably more proud of that fit than I am of the gear, to be honest. Uh, it took a bit of getting on. I had to hit it pretty hard, not hard enough to damage anything. I haven't damaged the centre hole or anything. I'm really happy with that. But I had to sit it on the back of the vise pretty hard and I found a, a cap to go on here nicely to, to clear this and found a cap to go on this end to stop that burn up, just a brass piece with the whole recess in it. And it took probably eight or ten pretty decent hits with a fairly big hammer to drive that home. And I don't think it's ever coming off there, to be honest. It's, it's on there for good. I'm going to scotch key this and basically I'm just going to drill this and tap it to four millimetres. Screw a end of a screw in there, a little bit of Loctite and finish it off the right length. That's the next job. I'm just going to put that through the hole in the drill press and drill that. 3.3. Uh, I'm doing that because no one will ever get it out again and it doesn't matter much what thread it is and I've got 4mm bolts. It's a nice half decent thread. I've probably got a new tap and I think this is pretty hard still. So I'm going to go over the drill press and drill that and then come back and we're going to have a bit of a look at, at putting a scotch key in it. I tend to use these a lot. Um, <laughs> They're cheap. You can buy them at the craft store for about three dollars for a thousand, something like that. And for mixing up and even mixing paint, that sort of stuff, you don't probably need the coloured ones. But you don't get mess on the bench because you can just drop it in the bin when you're done and get a fresh one. And that's just gone in there nicely like that. So that's pinned. Pretty confident that's not coming out. The instruction says to peen this over. I'm reluctant to do that yet. I might do it later. In reality, I'm probably not going to. I think it's going to look ugly and it's probably very easy to damage the shaft doing it. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. So there we go. Next job is putting back between centers. And I debated about doing this just yet because this gear needs to be the right length to give this the right spacing in the in the engine um, for the centre of the crankshaft. So I really can't set that up until I've got this board, which is about the next job. However, we can't determine this spacing until we've got this down to size and we can put it back between centres anytime. So I'm going to machine this down to fit in there. So that's the next job. I'll put this back in the lathe. Uh, between centres and we'll have a bit of a look at doing that. Rather than subject you to two hours of long slow mill work uh, and set up work and scratch my head and wondering whether I'm going to do it this way or that way, I've just gone and cut this key. I've done it in the horizontal. Uh, pretty slow cutter. We're probably running about 50, 60 RPM. And we've got a keyway all the way through. I haven't got a three mil stick and saw or a three mil end mil that's much good. So this was the best way to do it. And I've just used a, a I think it's 16th slit and saw and run a cut through and then under one beside it. So. Let's get this off here. 
um, just bolt it down in the in the t-slot there let's get this off here and give it a deeper and put it in and see if it lines up so here we are crankshafts in taps the gear against the housing can't feel a lot of wobble in that I'm really pleased with that actually um, considering all things uh, this key weighs in and looking pretty good right through there and the astute amongst you will have noticed that I put this in the in the lathe and and sliced a little bit off this end because it was sticking out quite a lot and given it a lot of thought and over the last little while I thought well it might be better shorter and it'll make the crank a bit shorter. We don't want any more overhang than we really need. So this is on. I'm not as happy about the fit of this as I, as I could be. It'll do and it's plenty good enough. I guess if push come to shove we can machine it on a flywheel but I'm not going to do that. I've made a 3D printed key, which isn't really the answer either. But if we push this key in really tight so that it attains a flywheel, it kicks it sideways and you get a bit of a and you get a bit of a wobble. So what I'm probably gonna do, I think, rather than have this rather than have this key stick out here to catch your fingers and your jumper and stuff on when you when you're walking past, it's really not a good idea. I'm gonna put a square key in it straight key right through and I'm going to put a grub screw in the back to hold it down and that should lock it on nice and concentric and take the wobble out of it this way and hopefully um, it won't take a lot to skim this up and get the wobble out this way if we need to between centers so there we go, that's my weekend. I don't know where it went really. It's time for work again tomorrow. I just wanted to share this with you and make some progress on it. It's all looking pretty good. I'm really pleased with this actually. Next job I think is probably to bore this at the inch and five sixteenth in the back here right through and face the front of it and then we can start thinking about pistons and conrods and cylinder heads and things I guess this is going to need a guard on it not really sure what to do about that but this because it's been scaled down is a little bit dangerous in that if you get your finger in here it's going to chop it off there's that much weight inertia in it it's going or even just kicking over you know it's it's a bit dangerous so we're going to make some sort of a tin guard for this I guess is probably the best or we'll make a cast aluminium one maybe We'll have a think about that. But that's another part that probably we didn't consider before. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you're watching this on Patreon, huge thanks um, to everyone who does that. It's an awesome thing and it makes projects like this possible. And if you're watching on YouTube, well, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. That's kind of cool. Uh, give me some feedback on this. Probably this was made, if you're watching on YouTube, this could have been made 12 months ago when we, by the time we get to this stage. But uh, if you want an update or want to see the latest project or you want to see this going, it might be a good idea to jump on Patreon and, and get some updates. Anyway, more soon guys and girls and be kind to each other.